Are you wanting to take your photos from average to absolutely stunning? Well, in today's video, we're going back to the basics and editing a photo from completely start to finish. We'll be focusing on the fundamentals and taking you through the entire photo editing process all inside of Lightroom. And with that being said, every good edit starts with a good photo. So that leads me to the other day when my brother and I went to downtown Detroit at seven o'clock in the morning to photograph a 2025 Porsche Taycan. We woke up that early, so the fog was coming in through the sky, the light was just starting to rise over the horizon, and it really just created a cinematic look. So diving into Lightroom, this and a few other pictures is what we're going to be editing today. And we're going to be recreating this image right here. So if you just go over here, click reset, and there we go, back to the basics. So, so the first thing that I like to do is make sure that the picture is level. So I go down here under my transform tab, click level, 90% of the time, that's going to be perfect. If it's not, you can go up here, click this, and then kind of like adjust this to how you see fit. So after that, I'll slide back up to the basic tab. And here I move my highlights, my shadows, my whites, and my blacks enough to where I like it, but I'll probably go back to here later on in the edit and tweak things. So let's just see what I can do. I think the whites look good. Bring the highlights up a bit because I like how that pops in the sky. Maybe add a bit of contrast, maybe darken it just a hair. I kind of want to bring the shadows down because I want to create a like a moody-ish kind of look, if you will. And after you go through the basics, I really like this section right here. This is like your texture and your clarity and this I usually will bump up my texture quite a bit if you zoom in here and you really get a look it like just gives it a little bit more oomph you know like you don't, you don't want to go too crazy with it but I'll probably go like like 29 30 ish and then my clarity if you've seen pictures on Instagram and such where it, they look like they're dreamy almost that's probably the clarity slider it kind of creates like a promise kind of look so you can crank the clarity where it looks like looks very interesting to say the least, or you can go the opposite way of clarity and kind of soften everything. So I like to soften it probably around there, 25, 24 ish. And then that's like my basic adjustments. If you want to see what your basic adjustments did, if you go up here to this eyeball, click and hold, you can see the before and after of what you just did in that basic tab. And then the next thing that I do personally is I go down to the very bottom into calibration. And this is a bit of a weird thing. If you've ever messed with calibration, it kind of just messes up with your colors a lot. But what I found, which works for me very well is I'll go to my blue primary, I'll half it there, then my green, half it, and then my red, and half it. And then it creates a little bit more red in the oranges. It kind of makes my browns more of an orange and it kind of just like, it creates the colors that I like. So after I'll do that, I'll go back to the top and then I'll mess around with my white balance and then find that sweet spot with those colors. And I think that looks pretty all right. On your keyboard, underneath the delete key, there's like a little slash, if you click that, you can see it before and after. So that's what we got so far. It's a little bit too magenta. So maybe I'll fix that a little bit. I'll bring a little bit more. Yeah, a bit more green in the tint. And then now we're starting to look pretty freaking good. Now the next thing is my tone curve. I'll go to this little spot in the tone curve. I'll select a point there, a point there, and a point there. So what that does is it creates five different points where you can manipulate your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights all within the tone curve. And to be honest, a lot of the edit can happen just in the tone curve. So I'll show you what I mean. So I usually start in the midtones, and honestly, like a lot of photo editing is, you kind of just go back and forth to where you find something that you like. So I like this little glow, this little glow that it's creating in the highlights. So I'll do that. But under this one, I kind of want my shadows to like be more earthy and darker. I'm not really much of a fan of the faded blacks anymore. I used to be in like 2017, 2018. And then same thing with the basic tab in your tone curve. If you click the eyeball and hold it, you can see your before and after of what the tone curve did. So if you've also noticed in the tone curve area, there's a red, a green and a blue slider. If you're a psychopath, you'll manipulate all of these. I'm not as psychopathic, but I do do one thing and I'll grab a point in the, in the center of all of them and just change the color a little bit. And then I'll find, it's basically just like another version of a white balance. I'll find a sweet spot. I think I like a little bit more blues. Find that sweet spot, probably like right there. And then lastly is the blue, just like that. So again, this doesn't change too much, but it does enough if you see the before and after it does something, you know? <laughs> I really like the tone curve, and this picture doesn't do it a justice, but you can do a lot in the tone curve. Next thing I'll do is I go to my color grading tab, click on my shadows, and then if you just move this around, this will change the color of your shadows. So me personally, I like to put them more in like the greenish yellow. So I'll get something like that, and then you click it again, and you can slide up and down on that. So I'll probably go like there-ish, and then I'll change my highlights 
I usually like my highlights to be around blue because I feel like the sky is blue. So your highlights should be blue. That's just me. Find something like that. Slide it down so it's not too crazy. And then bam, we're not looking too shabby. I'm liking it. So proceed, honestly nearing the end of how I would edit my pictures. Last thing is your lens correction. If you shoot like a super wide lens, sometimes it'll distort it a bit. So you go in here, select the lens that is yours and then change the distortion. So bam, there we go. Um, honestly, I think it's a hair too green. I'm gonna put a little bit more orange in it, a hair more magenta in it. Honestly, we're almost done for the most part. A lot of people will go crazy in this entire color section depends on the picture for this one it doesn't need too much so maybe i'll get rid of the yellows a little bit maybe change the orange just so it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye something like that and then the next really big thing especially with automotive and car photography is up here you'll see this little button click that and then these are your masks what i usually do is i'll click a linear gradient click and drag and then you can go as high or low as you want i'll probably do it like this move it down a little bit and I'll just turn the exposure down a hair. So you're focusing your eye towards the middle of the picture where the subject is. And then I'll probably do the opposite. I'll do a linear gradient top down. That's actually just boosting the highlights a little bit. I think you could use a little bit more green in the tint, something like that. Maybe a hair more contrast. And there we go. That's basically done. If you want it to go a little bit more, you can go in here inside of your linear gradients that you made if you select it. And then at the bottom here, you have a little minus. You can minus the subject. And what that does, you click O on your keyboard, it'll show you it did this. It created your linear gradient, but it minus the subject. So the subject being the car here, it got completely rid of that. So look at that, that's pretty neat, right? But for this, I don't think I wanna do that. So I'm gonna leave it as is. And there we go, from absolute before to completely editing after. I think that's a really good edit. There's a side-by-side. -side. If you wanna do a side-by-side, -side, it's Y on your keyboard. There you go. And there we go, that's how I would from start to finish, edit this picture. And then I'm gonna give you guys a little secret on something else. So watch this. So if I go to library and I select another picture from this shoot. So let's say this one. I really like this picture with the tail lights, with the GM building in the background, it looks really good. So what I'll do is I'll select the one that I just edited, click command on my keyboard and then select this one. Bottom right, click sync settings. And then here you can turn on and off what you don't want. So I'm gonna leave the masks on, looks good. I click synchronize. And what that does is put all of the edits that I did on the first picture, down to the second one. So now if I open up this in my develop tab, all of those edits from the last one are on here and it's already basically done as an edit. There you go. There's that picture. Bada bing, bada boom. And then another before and after of that one. And this works best when you're on the same shoot, you can edit a picture, sync that to the other ones and it looks pretty freaking good if you ask me. So yeah, so those are those two photos. And then I think I'll do one more start to finish just so I can show you a little bit different scenery. So for the next photo that we're gonna edit, it's this Porsche logo on a completely different car at a completely different day with a filter on it. There, there's so much going on, but it's a completely different scenario. So we're gonna click bottom right, reset, and then try and achieve that exact same look from square one. So first thing that I'm gonna do is go up here, crop it, make sure that that logo is perfectly center. Looks good to me. And then secondly, We'll zoom in there's a few like little dots here whether it's scratches on the hood or little or little spots on my camera sensor we're going to zoom in on the top right here click this little guy it's your like spot removal so we'll go over here resize it click and then as you can see it completely gets rid of that little dot so we're going to go in here give me two seconds while i get rid of all of these little dots here Okay, so I didn't get every single dot, but if you look before and after, a lot of those little dots are now gone. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just like we did before, go into our basic tab and kind of just change some things around and move some sliders until we find what we like. And usually I like to do the same things-ish for all my photos. So I'll up the contrast a bit, up the highlights, bring down the shadows. There's one thing that I really like to do and I'll show you in this one, but it's to really exaggerate your highlights and exaggerate your shadows. So you want your shadows dark, and you want your highlights bright. I feel like that just really brings together an image, but that's just me. Just like the last one, let's bring the clarity down just a hair, up the texture, because we want that texture to pop. Go into our tone curve, create these three dots, and we'll come back to that, go down to the bottom, do my regular little thing down here. And when it comes to something like this, whether it's the paint of a car or just something that you want the color to look correct, watch this. So if you go before and after, as we can tell, the yellow is becoming more of an orange. We don't want that. So if you zoom in, click Y on your keyboard, it'll do a little half and half. So as you can tell though, the red on this side on the before is a little darker and this side is a little bit more bright and really, really saturated. On the right side, if you scroll down into your saturation tab, select this little guy, 
and it creates a little eyedropper kind of thing. So you click and then hold, go up and down, and that will take down the saturation of that color. So what we're gonna do is this yellow isn't really matching, it's more of like an orangish. We'll go to hue, select that, and then go up and down to where it matches the before. Cause there's some things in pictures where you wanna change it and enhance the picture, but you don't want to change the colors too much. Like the color on a car or something along the lines of that. So we'll come out, click Y again, and now my colors are starting to look good, but the hood is a little bit too blue. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and change that here in a second. So with the hood being so blue, we can just go to your saturation, bring that down a little bit. We don't wanna go too much, go like that, and then go to my blue hue slider, and just change it from teal to more of a darker blue, like so. Now, before and after, we're starting to make a bit of a difference that I like. So next thing, we're gonna go up to the tone curve and then spend a minute in the tone curve, just going back and forth and finding something that matches your photo. And look at that, just the tone curve itself, before and after. Crazy difference what that tone curve does. So let's go back into the red colors and change these a little bit. And honestly, for this picture, I don't think I need to change too much. That's pretty good as is, I'm not gonna lie. All right, next thing, my color grading tab. Like I said before, in my color grading tab, I like to do more of the shadows as an orange ish yellow ish green kind of kind of thing so bam there we go i will say the hood is still looking a bit blue let's take down the saturation a bit right there for after so far we're looking good but there's one thing that really really changes the game when it comes to pictures like this and i'm going to show you real quick so watch just like the previous pictures that we edited in the top right here we'll go to this one select another linear gradient instead of like the top down where it was bright and then the bottom was dark we're going to create a fake light source if you will so we're going to click here bring it all the way halfway across the image like that and we're going to up the highlights make this super bright maybe even a bit of an exposure add a little bit of yellow to it maybe so it kind of has some warmth to it and the opposite we're going to create another one here another linear gradient that's on the opposite side like that bring down the exposure create maybe a little bit down on the shadows too like that so what we're creating here is basically like a fake sun we're creating the top right a light coming in and then on the bottom left we're creating like those dark shadows and creating that moody look to it so so now before and after the image is really really starting to pop from what it used to be look at that bam to bam crazy and honestly I think we're done. I think we're basically done here. If you want, you can also add down here in the effects tab, a little bit of a vignette darker around the edges. I might add a little bit to this one because I like how that looks. And uh, there we go. So there is the before and after of this image as well. Completely different look, completely different scenario, different lighting and stuff like that. The biggest takeaways from this image is probably those linear gradients, top and bottom, really emphasizing the highlights and really emphasizing your shadows in the opposite direction. So hopefully that helps when it comes to editing inside of Lightroom, whether it's car photography, or just lighting scenarios and you're trying to make something pop and if you want to achieve similar looks to this I have my own preset pack it'll be the first link down in the description it's a preset pack for Lightroom import export and then slap these presets on your pictures and then it'll basically bring them to life with you having to do little to no work at all so that being said I appreciate you guys tuning into this video hopefully I'll catch you in the next one peace out baby